The Type K3 No. 1 and Type K7 No. 4 are a pair of 2.3 Japanese subchasers. These ships are similar to the American SC-497 I covered previously, but vary enough to warrant covering them. For a bit of history behind these, the Type K3 class submarine chaser was built from 1933 to 1936. Two were built, and they were commissioned from 1934 to 1945. The Type K7 was built in 1937 to 1939, serving as a replacement for the K3. Nine were built, and they were in commission from 1938 to 1960. Eight were sunk or scuttled during or after World War II, but a single ship of the class survived the war and was used by the Republic of China until 1960 under the names Haida, Fuling, and Minjong. Both the K3 and K7 use the same primary armament, a single turret using two 40mm Vickers autocannons, or pom-poms. While these guns are individually weaker than the Bofors cannon used by American ships, having two of them is certainly better than a single Bofors. This stool cannon turret serves as the main draw of the K3 and K7. It's an incredibly potent armament, being able to tear apart any target at close range or deal damage at longer ranges through sheer volume of fire. Unlike the Bofors, these guns can fire continuously without having to cool down, but do have to reload after 50 rounds from each gun. The main place these guns struggle is when fighting against highly armored ships like the Soviet MBK-161. The pom-pom doesn't have enough pen to go through the midsection of the ship, so it takes more precise aim to hit vulnerable parts of it. For belts, the pom-pom has a universal belt with a 50-50 split of HE and AP, one with more HE, one with more AP, and one with a full loadout of distance fuse shells. I'd recommend bringing the universal belt primarily, though bringing a few of the distance fuse shells is also worthwhile to fight off planes. Speaking of fighting off planes, next comes the anti-air weapons. Both the Type K3 and Type K7 have three 25mm Type 96 cannons. They're placed in different locations on the two ships. On the Type K3, two are placed on the sides and one is placed in the rear. On the Type K7, all three are placed in the center line of the ship, notably allowing one of them to fire forward. These aren't particularly effective against planes, but are surprisingly great against ships, so I'd recommend leaving them targeting both air and water vehicles. For belts, the Type 96 has three. The first belt has 3 HE and 1 AP, the second belt has 3 AP and 1 HE, and the last belt is 4 HE. The individual HE shells are different though. The yellow HEIT shells have a particularly high chance to light fires. Due to this, I'd recommend bringing the HEIT belts on the Type 96, as they have the highest density of these shells. Next comes the secondary weapons. The Type K3 gets depth charges, while the Type K7 gets depth charges and a depth charge mortar. Neither are really useful, I wouldn't recommend researching or bringing them. When it comes to survivability, neither the Type K3 nor Type K7 have any form of armor protection. They do have high crews of 65 and 59 respectively, this makes them harder to kill than most ships of the same tier. For mobility, the K3 and K7 both have low top speeds of 39 and 37 km per hour respectively along with below average turning. They're not anything notable in this department. All of these aspects combined put the Type K3 and Type K7 into the role of clearing out smaller ships. A few good hits with the dual pom-pom can cripple or kill any smaller ships, and the 25mm cannons are capable of providing excellent point defense against flanking PT boats. While still effective against larger ships, many of them will have more range or firepower, meaning it's important to cripple the enemy ship before it can turn to fight your own. For modifications, both follow the same general order. Toolset, fire protection system, rudder replacement, auxiliary arm at targeting, propeller replacement, 40mm HEDF clips, primary arm at targeting, and engine maintenance. For crew skills, I'd recommend leadership, crew interchangeability, fire prevention, and ship control. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe so I can continue to cover ships throughout all of War Thunder.